Welcome back. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa as we look at uh, the latest inflation figures released by the NBS yesterday. On a month and month basis, the headline inflation rate in June 2023 was 2.13%. This was 0.19% point higher than the rate recorded in May 2023. This means that in June 2023, on average, the general price level was 0.19% higher relative to May. The percentage change in the average CPI for the 12-month period ended in June 2023 over the average of the CPI for the previous 12-month period was 21.54%, showing a 5% increase compared to 16.54% recorded in June of last year. Now, economic and public affairs analyst Bola Hong Olojade joins me now in this discourse. Good morning to you, Bola Hong. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, first of all, uh, because of uh, the relatively uh, hardship that uh, most people went through, some people believe that uh, that 22.79% uh, should be a bit higher than what was announced. What do you really think, Bolaho? Okay, um, when I saw the figure myself, I felt the same way. Uh, we had all anticipated uh, a figure that would be higher higher by virtue of the fact that in June, there were two major policies that kicked in. Uh, number one is the first subsidy removal, and the other one is the collapse of the uh, multiple exchange rates. Now, these two policies have implications for uh, average prices in the market, and therefore we we're expecting uh, something much uh, higher than what we got. So um, initially, I thought, what would be responsible for this? So my mind went to, oh, could it be the fact that there had been a drop in diesel price, about 200 naira, thereabout, from 800 plus to 600 plus? Or could it be a PG? I learned that the price of cooking gas also went. Yeah, but even those two, while they might affect the energy side of things, how about the food side of things and, and another uh, element of the inflation figure? Mm. Um, where I learned that the uh, uh, MBS has spoken to why uh, the increase uh, yeah. might be marginal, All right. um, much less than what Okay, so, but let's really talk about what you just mentioned in passing, which was actually uh, food uh, prices. Now, the uptick in the inflation rate was largely driven by the food index, as food inflation accelerated to 25.25%, especially by the prices of um, staples, which include oil, bread, cereals, fish, potatoes, yam, and other tubers, you know, vegetable milk, cheese, and even eggs. You know, from what we hear right now, even uh, bread sellers are, uh, increasing their prices. Bolaho, what do we have in our hands? Um, we have a, a potential food uh, insecurity issue on our hands. Um, if we don't take measures to drive down or to moderate food prices. Mm. Um, like you rightly said, food prices, um, it drives, is, is, is typically much higher than the composite inflation fee. Which means that one way to reduce the composite inflation figure is if we can drive down the food inflation. Um, I, I believe this is part of what was driving the recent uh, plan to intervene by the federal government of Nigeria. There was this news uh, about a state of emergency in food security. Uh, if we're able to actually deal with food matters, uh, we will be able to manage this inflation better, much better mm. than any of the other measures like uh, increasing uh, MPR of almost every, 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 every meeting of the uh, mm. NPC, and which has had little or no effect on, 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 on inflation. So, uh, if we deal with food matters, mm. which will, you know, we, we will definitely be able to uh, make a dent All on right. inflation much more than other measures. All right, we'll talk about uh, the monetary policy measures of um, the Central Bank of Nigeria. But uh, just recently, President Tinubu uh, uh, plans uh, to deploy savings from the fuel subsidy removal into the agricultural sector to revamp the sector and also grow its contribution to 70% in the long run. How far do you really think that this can actually help out? Uh, from from the um, policy statement, um, it, it, it appears that the government 
does understand the problem um, and, and the policy is a policy in the right direction. The devil is in the detail of implementation. Um, uh, it, it, because this is not, sincerely speaking, it is not the first time we are making a right diagnosis of the problem with our food uh, security. So, um, understanding it, rolling out a policy uh, around, or building a policy around it, will is a very good start. But we need to be able to follow through with the implementation as well. Mm. That is, it is the implementation that will actually deliver the dividend. But as far as realization that um, we don't even farm enough, want to put in about 500,000 more hectares of farmland in place, that our farm production has been seasonal, we want to be able to produce over a 12-month period. We realize that our yields are horrible, so we want to be able to put fertilizer in place, give farmers access to improved seedlings, and at the same time, uh, be able to help them with farming practices via education. We understood firmly that even after producing, we lose a lot of what we produce to rottenness and all form of decay and destruction because there is a problem with connecting the centers of production to the market where these things are consumed. We also have a problem with uh, storage. So the new intervention is talking about storage uh, and, and, and other things. These are issues that will help us to achieve food security, we will also have to hook this up to industrialization to be able to say, look, we need to go beyond producing primary agricultural product. Let's be able to add value to agricultural product and export not just raw commodities of agricultural product, but value-add product that can help us to even earn uh, forex. This will ride on the back of the industrialization agenda. And I see the role of power, electricity mm -hmm. also in that in that middle. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a whole gamut of things to be done, and the devil is in the detail as far as implementation is concerned. All right, now moving on. Now the highest increases were recorded in the prices of passenger transport by air, uh, gas, vehicle spare parts, liquid fuel, uh, fuels and lubricant for personal transport equipment, medical services passenger transport by road. I know this did not really surprise you because uh, Nigerians are actually all paid higher last month. But the question right now would be uh, the palliative measures that the, the presidency had talked about uh, when they negotiated uh, with the Nigeria Labour Congress and the TUC. By now, Nigerians would have thought that maybe by now there would have been something to cushion the effect of the high cost of transportation. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that because there was a deadline, an eight, eight, eight week. Eight week, deadline. yes, yes. Yeah, for so the tripartite committees to uh, submit their reports and, you know, and, and all that. I'm not so sure if that deadline has expired already. Um, so we might have to wait a little bit to see what is in the offing. Uh, part of what is in that discussion included issues around minimum wage, mm. uh, issues around alternative energy sources probability of being able to use CNG, which is said to be more cheaper, uh, to power some of uh, the, the segments of uh, what we currently use, uh, PMS, and, and, and several other things. If these things are properly worked out, these are the real palliative, mm. if you ask me, not even the sharing of uh, uh, 8,000 naira to uh, 12 million. 12 million households, yes. Okay, let's talk right now concerning uh, monetary policy, which... Uh, a whole lot of people believe is not actually working with uh, the inflationary pressure. You know, just uh, in May, the CBN raised its benchmark lending rates to 18.5%. What should we be doing concerning our monetary policy? Because over time, we keep on increasing, and yet inflation is seemingly very stubborn and not responding. Yeah, we need to do much more than uh, using monetary policy. Um, there are other two that are available to us, including the fiscal uh, uh, measures that we can use. The problem is not exactly that people have too much money and, and therefore if we reduce the, the uh, amount of money that is available to them, we'll be able to curb inflation. Uh, that is why it appears as if the monetary policy measures are not strong enough to uh, moderate the inflationary pressure. So we need to look at what is going on in the manufacturing, in the trade, 
segment of the economy. Our manufacturers have it easy, for whether it is in the importation of raw material or in the other cost profile, uh, other cost element that goes into that go into their cost profile. How can we step into that space and make it easier for them to manufacture, create a, a, a better business environment where they can thrive? When they thrive, they will employ more people. When they employ more people, they pay more people. More people are able to spend and consume. Government is able to earn more taxes. And there is a multiplier effect on the economy. Mm. This, this will help more than just uh, a push uh, from the monetary side of things. We have to look at what we can do with taxes as well. Rather than talking about, oh, you know, adding up to taxes at this time, we need to look at taxes from an incentive perspective. How can we give certain critical segment of the economy certain incentive so that they will behave in a particular manner? And that behavior will help to drive the, 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 the inflation moderation that we seek uh, to achieve. Then the last one on our inflation is whatever we can do in the food space will help a great deal because food remains the highest number puller in the, in the, in, in the content mm. of what goes into the inflation basket. True. Okay, so Bola Honda, 22.79% uh, was uh, what we experienced in June. So uh, let's just uh, do a bit of forecast and um, extrapolate for July. Uh, what do you see happening and uh, uh, how should we uh, be tackling it in the immediacy? For instance, you've talked about food, you've talked about, um, uh, you know, the... Uh, taxation, you know, but right now the informal sector might not really uh, get uh, this uh, uh, salary increments that uh, labor and federal government might be working on. So, what do we do as we speak uh, in this month of July specifically? Okay, mo mo most likely the inflation number in the month of July will be higher than what we have right now. Um, the reason we have a little uh, increase this time around was that. MBS uses data up till the middle of the month. Mm. So which means that what they used to compute the inflation figure we are talking about in 2.79 was data up until 15th of June. Mm. Now, 15th of June were the early days of the subsidiary recover. Uh, maybe as of 15th, I can't even remember if the uh, collapse of the exchange rate has happened by then. Mm. So by the time we are doing the full, the, the next inflation figure, which will take from middle of June to middle of July, the chances are higher that we might be in the 23% uh, uh, neighborhood. Uh, you know, so that, that, that's what I think. However, what can we begin to do? Um, some of the things we need to begin to do is, number one, let's be able to close out on the discussions that are going on by the, uh, you know, with the tripartite committee of labor and government and maybe is the organized private sector. Number two, I, I, I love the step taken by the government to suspend the uh, Finance Act. Mm -hmm. Let's look within that Finance Act and see how we can use incentive to drive behavior rather than just chasing after increment of taxation rate. If we create the right environment, even the mention, the policy direction alone has, mm -hmm. an, has a way in which you start to change behavior before the actual implementation uh, uh, impact mm. yeah it's it's so so and whatever we can do in the food area mm. we must do and right. you, you, you just mentioned the fact that poultry people are already complaining because of the they price are. of meat yeah uh -huh. so we must ask ourselves in that price of maize space what can we do mm. whatever we do there we not only affect all things that are related to maize including uh, uh the direct consumption but we also affect the price of poultry products. True. All right, thank you so much, Angola, for the useful insights that you have shared uh, concerning our uh, economic matters, specifically the inflation, which is uh, soaring very high. We do appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. All right. As we go on the show today, 
The Nigerian economic system is peculiar and does not usually follow the established principles and policies. And as such, entrepreneurs need to move from the plug and play approach in problem sharing. This was the position of the author of Musing by the Muse, Adebola Akindele, at a public presentation which held in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that report. I'll see you again next time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Enjoy the rest of your day. In a world of rapidly moving economic, social, and governance parts, and a rising uncertainty in governance complexity, finding a synthesis of ideas to help individuals and institutions navigate is needed. In an interview, the author said Nigerians have to learn from those who have had a history and can bring the stories forward. A lot can be achieved because the Nigerian system, the Nigerian person and the Nigerian system is very peculiar. We are very peculiar to the extent that I don't know of any economic theory. I don't know of any, if any has worked. I don't know of many that have worked for Nigeria ever since I've become, you know, aware. And uh, for as long as we continue to try and uh, do a plug and play model for these theories and these applications and all these things coming from outside, they never solve our problems entirely. They never do. So we have to, we have to look for those that have lived the story, that have lived the history that can bring the history and the story forward and allow it, allow this story and history become what can be useful for the others coming. The panel session saw the discussions Joe Joanne on success, wealth and purpose. As comparisons are made on where to draw the lines and what really matters, individuals and entrepreneurs alike were urged to understand the purpose to which they have been called. Other sessions include excerpt reading from Musings to Muse, which included Beyond Success to Chaos and Opportunities, among others. Wealth for us is relative. We must have wealth, which is also relative in terms of quantities, in terms of numbers. Because, uh, like I said, it's not about money alone. It's about how many people, so many other factors. For me as a person, I derive joy in making other people happy. So success is relative to individuals. To some people it's just about money. To some people it's about luxury. To some people it's about housing. It's relative, but definitely it is not about money. So to the extent of what they discuss at the panel is getting an alignment between purpose and your goals, and then you understand your journey. And so you don't spend your journey chasing money, you change purpose, as in like, what do I want it to be known for? What do I want to do? Um, again, like, um, I believe it was Dick who spoke about it. It is relative as to where you are. Take action. Because if you don't take action, at the end of the day, nothing happens. So all these valuable lessons in the book are not going to amount to anything if those who read the book don't take action. Musings of the Muse is a compendium of original thought and insightful ideas on leadership, management, and life. Justin Nakadoni, Plus TV News, Lagos. In a world of rapidly moving economic, social, and governance parts, and a rising uncertainty in governance complexity, finding a synthesis of ideas to help individuals and institutions navigate is needed. In an interview, the author said Nigerians have to learn from those who have had a history and can bring the stories forward. A lot can be achieved because the Nigerian system, the Nigerian person and the Nigerian system is very peculiar. We are very peculiar to the extent that I don't know of any economic theory. I don't know of any, if any has worked. I don't know of many that have worked for Nigeria ever since I've become, you know, aware. And uh, for as long as we continue to try and uh, do a plug and play, model for these theories and these applications and all these things coming from outside. They never solve our problems entirely. They never do. So we have to, we have to look for those that have lived the story, that have lived the history, that can bring the history and the story forward and allow it, allow this story and history become what can be useful for the others coming. The panel session saw discussions Joe Joanne on success, wealth and purpose. As comparisons are made on where to draw the lines and what really matters, individuals and entrepreneurs alike were urged to understand the purpose to which they have been called. Other sessions include excerpt reading from Musings to Mirrors, which included Beyond Success to Chaos and Opportunities, among others. Wealth for us is relative. We must have wealth, 
which is also relative in terms of quantities, in terms of numbers. Because, uh, like I said, it's not about money alone. It's about how many people, so many other factors. For me as a person, I derive joy in making other people happy. So success is relative to individuals. To some people, it's just about money. To some people, it's about luxury. To some people, it's about housing. It's relative, but definitely it is not about money. So to the extent of what they discuss at the panel is getting an alignment between purpose and your goals and then you understand your journey. And so you don't spend your journey chasing money, you change purpose as in like, what do I want it to be known for? What do I want to do? Um, again, like um, I believe it was Dick who spoke about it. It is relative as to where you are. Take action. Because if you don't take action, at the end of the day, nothing happens. So all these valuable lessons in the book are not going to amount to anything if those who read the book don't take action. Musings of the Muse is a compendium of original thought and insightful ideas on leadership, management, and life. Justin Nakadonye, Plus TV News, Lagos.